good to be back, it's good to be back. Now, as I was driving to the set, a question kind of popped up in my head. It's a curious paradox. Now, you guys know that swans are the most loyal animals on the planet, dolphins the smartest, and sea otters the furriest. Allegiance, intelligence, and fur abundance seem to be the trifecta that we look for in a pet. Yet you don't see people keep swans, dolphins, or sea otters at home, do you? Well, maybe some do, but when it comes to a trusty companion in people's homes, nothing come close to the dog. I haven't been able to put my finger on why a dog has become man's best friend. Uh, it's, it's certainly not perfect, but you know, maybe it doesn't need to be. Now there's obviously going to be a lot of fluff, snuff, and scruff dotted with a healthy dose of English stuff. With the help of our friend Elsa Speak, the unique artificial intelligence app that helps you perfect your English pronunciation 24-7. Let's follow along. Welcome to another episode of IELTS Face Off on the Go. And we're still in the beautiful Dalak. We're on a hillside and witnessing a very, very majestic sunset right over there. I'm really happy right now. You don't know how happy I am right now to be in this beautiful weather, to be in this beautiful lighting, and also to be meeting with one of our friends. And also, we're being accompanied by another friend, which is the 24-7 AI English speaking coach by Elsa Speak. What are we doing on a hillside? What are we gonna be bathing in the sun of Dalek for? You will have to watch and see, but first, let's go and meet our friend. Here she comes, here she comes. Hi. Can you introduce yourself a bit to the camera, please? Uh, hi, my name is Tao Wing. And I'm a 12th grader from Tang Long High School for the Gifted. Mm -hmm. And I'm really honored and also excited to be accompanied by Ms. Tao Tam right here to film IELTS on the Go Season 5. Season 5, yep. It's Season 5 and we're all about traveling, all about personal experience, and all about speaking with Elsa Speak. Uh, but first, I'd like to ask every single one of our guests on this season about how they feel about where they come from. So what about Dalak? do you love most? Um, you can understand what I love about that like most by enjoying the scenery, mm -hmm. hillside scenery <laughs> with the sunset over there yeah. in this golden hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is nature, there is weather, there is beautiful ladies. So like, there's a lot to love about that like. But what about its natural life do you like most? I must say that I love the weather of the lake most because it is mild, it is soothing to the mind, but also calming to your skin. Mm -hmm. And I can say that you cannot find another, another serene weather or the scenery anywhere else in Vietnam. Mm. It's really nice where we're standing right now because over there is the sun, but the moon is also coming out. So everything is in perfect harmony. Oh, talking about harmony, the people of Dalek are known to be very harmonious, very hospitable. What can you say about the urban life of Dalek and about Dalek people? Um, life in Dalek is unique because mm -hmm. it does not have the hectic pace of the hustle and bustle of cities like Saigon or Hanoi. But people in Dalek, they have their own flow of energy. They go with the flow, but also they does not let themselves immerse in the work, but have a bit of time to enjoy the nature, the nature of Dalek. Well, it's true because like nature is just on the side of Dalek, right? You can drive just a bit and visit a hillside or visit zoos. I've heard a lot about Dalek zoos that are very loving to their animals, which is great. This season, we're also diving deeper into the nuances of learning English. And we do believe that every uh, determined English learner must face a number of obstacles before they can further their higher academic journey. What would you say is the biggest difficulty you had to face when learning English? Um, the first obstacles on my way to achieving advanced English mm -hmm. is pronunciation. 
Right, pronunciation. Yeah. Hmm, I have a friend that can help with that. I'll introduce them later, but please do continue. Okay. Well, pronunciation is like the first impression when meeting people. And knowing that I really struggle with my pronunciations. There's one time people call me Indian because how I, I do the toning, how I do my intonation and also my um, accents too. Well, I feel like personally, this is me speaking, yeah. but I genuinely think you have a very pretty pronunciation already. Yeah. And okay. honestly, she's doing so well, right, you guys? This is a very beautiful girl with a very beautiful mind. And I have something that can help also. It's called the Elsa Speak app. Okay. And I would like to invite you right here and join me in uh, discovering this app. So a little bit more on Elsa Speak. It is an English speaking app that helps you a lot with your pronunciation skills because it rates and also um, guides you in okay. pronoun pronouncing things. And our topic for today is going to be about fruits. We um, do know that Da Lag is very famous for its fruits, right? What's your favorite fruit here? Um, strawberry. Strawberries? Yeah. Let's see if it shows up on the test. Okay, so let's go. Okay. Peach. Okay, I'll do this one. Peach. Ooh. Pineapple. Okay. Pineapple. Ooh, you're perfect. <laughs> Papaya. Papaya. Yay, we finished it. Okay. Huh, the only shame is that strawberry didn't show up on the list. Oh, uh, I think strawberry shouldn't be the missing thing on the list because when you have been in the like, strawberry is the one thing that you should enjoy mm -hmm. to make it a fulfilled trip to that day. Mm -hmm. So are you going to uh, bring me some strawberries or are we gonna go anywhere to have strawberries because they're so important in Dalai? Yeah, so I think you should try harvesting them right here. Oh, okay. Fresh? Okay. Okay, so yeah. harvesting fresh strawberries, that is going to be the IELTS on the go challenge for this episode. Let's do it. Let's okay. go. Let's go. So we are in a very secretive uh, strawberry garden. We've waited for it to uh, be nightfall so we could have this very romantic experience with only me and Tang Wing right here. We're gonna go strawberry cherry picking, uh, strawberry picking at night, which is a very new experience because I've only heard of people going uh, strawberry picking in the day. But what do you think about strawberry in Dalai? Do you think that it's a very special fruit? Um, I think uh, strawberry is a very special kind of fruit because it is compatible with the kind of soil that had an adequate amount of clay in it. And the basin soil of that like is suitable, very suitable for the cultivation of strawberry. And that is also what makes uh, strawberry in that like a very enjoying and also delicious fruit to devour. Mm -hmm. So where do you often buy strawberries in that like? Because uh, they're so, I feel like we're surrounded by strawberries, but what do you choose? Where do you choose when picking your own personal strawberries? Um, personally, I, I don't go out in the market to find strawberry but usually I receive them from my relatives because oh. they are the professional in this realm because they know which is the most delicious fruit mm -hmm. to pick and oh uh, yeah that's all. I wish I had relatives that grew strawberries. Yeah, It's, it's, so, really incon nice. it's so convenient. <laughs> Fresh fruit all the time. So how often do you have strawberries? Do you have it every week, every day, or um, a month or two in between? Um, I think I have strawberry on a monthly basis. Oh, monthly basis. And uh, usually I, 
In the summer, I have strawberry dishes every day. Like, I can eat it fresh, or making it a chocolate fondue. Wow. Or just simply blend it and make and make some uh, some cups of smoothie, mm. strawberry smoothie. Right. That sounds like a really good life to live, honestly. <laughs> strawberry on a monthly basis. All right, now look at how much strawberry we have right now. It smells like a dream. It's so sweet, I could almost taste it. And I am so grateful for Tao Nguyen to bringing me, for bringing me on this very special date. So tomorrow, I'm going to bring her out for a very, very special meetup with the fauna of Dalek, which is the other part of Dalek nature that we cannot miss at all. So. Right now, we're gonna go and pay for this and I'll bring her on a very special date tomorrow. Let's go. Now, I will readily admit I'm not the most comfortable around animals, especially dogs. So I'm really curious to find out what Tao Tum will have to do on the dog farm. Let's find out. Right, so as I promised yesterday, I'm gonna bring you to this beautiful place to experience uh, the fauna. Okay. of uh, Dalag and they are so beautiful look at this baby we are at puppy farm and look at this dog look at this dog and look at all the other dogs so <laughs> 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 they're really happy but they're ignoring us Hi. your favorite type of dog? Um, I think I like these corgi because they have, mm. they, oh, have so cute, so cute. they are friendly mm. and oh my god they are cute. Oh. I'd want to have another one of my own too. Wait a moment I'm gonna pick you up. I'm very curious as to what these little babies are. Oh I think they have our secret word of the day. <laughs> I think we have to rest them. a very badly bitten paper and I think it will contain the word of the day. Open it up. It's very badly bitten. Okay. So the word is okay. can you read it out for me? One more time. Habitat. Okay, so we're gonna ask Elsa speak what habitat means. Right. So I'm gonna need you to read into this machine. Okay. Let's let's sit here. So we have a word. Let's see our score. Okay. Yay! We got a ninety-eight percent. Do you think we did a good job? Okay. So habitat is the natural home or environment of an animal, plant, or other organism. So new word learned. Thank you, Elsa Speak, and thank you, babies, for ha bringing us a very very fun day out. Also, thank you, Tao Huing, so much for accompanying me today to uh, first berry picking and then going out with these babies. I really had such a great time. Yeah, I had a great time with you too. Okay, so we'll see you on another episode of IELTS On The Go. And uh, remember to check in with us. Bye.
So once again, our very own Willem Tatum has aced the IELTS face-off challenge. And the word of the day is habitat. Personally, for me, it's one of my favorites because it has so many other variants. Now, most people have come to associate Elsa speak with pronunciation training, and that's not wrong, but I think you're overlooking its dictionary function. You can also use Elsa speak as a full-fledged dictionary. It has loads of words and phrases, and best of all, it gives you instant feedback on how well you pronounce the words you're trying to learn, which I think is such an innovative technology. So download the Elsa Speak app, have fun with it every day, and send us a screenshot of how you're progressing in terms of your pronunciation. I'm really interested in finding out how you're enjoying the app, as well as what awaits our IELTS on the go host in the next adventure. I guess we'll have to find out next week. But don't go anywhere because IELTS Expert is coming up next. Hi, my full name is Nguyen Thanh Thuy and I'm 16 years old. I'm a student at Sơn Tây High School in uh, math class. Um, so there's a moment when I left my hometown uh, to study far from my house, but my family didn't approve my decisions. Um, but I think that is not only a, a challenge but it's also an opportunity for me. I love so there at the moment. Welcome back to IELTS Face Off. This is IELTS Expert, my personal favorite section and one that I know a lot of viewers are looking forward to every week. So without further ado, let's welcome back this season's IELTS expert, hailing from America, Mr. Michael Alpa. Welcome back. Hey, Thank you. Let's get yourself comfortable. How are you doing? Doing well, how are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, uh, it's a pleasure. Our IELTS on the go host, uh, Ms. Tao Tham, went to uh, a dog farm, and I personally have not, have uh, no experience with, with dog farms. Have you? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't ever think I've been to a dog farm, but I've been to, a, you know, a kennel okay. where they have dogs that you can rescue and then adopt them okay. into, your, into your own home. Yeah, you're an, an IELTS expert, and today yeah. we're going to talk about a very uh, interesting aspect of the IELTS, uh, but first of all, we're going to... Um, turn our attention toward the screen and we're gonna see a little trivia for our uh, viewers at home today. The question is, um, vocabulary is important to the student's success in the reading test. True or false? Okay, so uh, the answer is pretty obvious. Um, vocabulary is very important. What do you think is the significance of uh, vocabulary in the reading test? Well, I think you need a wide range of vocabulary, you know, an extensive vocabulary to be able to understand what the, the reading passage is talking about mm -hmm. and what the questions are asking you to do or, or, or not to do. So uh, one of the things that I see a lot of, um, you know, IELTS learners do at home is to, um, they, they take like, like a very binary approach to learning vocabulary. It's like, you know, English words on one side and then Vietnamese definitions on the other. And, and I don't think it's, it's very effective. What, what is like an alternative that you would suggest? Setting a list of 100 words and, and, and the Vietnamese translation, like I said, it doesn't really give you the context. Uh, so reading short passages that are similar to what you would see on the IELTS exam uh, is the best way to learn in context. And I think vocabulary is slow and steady. I, I don't think that you can absorb a, a large amount of vocabulary and really retain it yeah. and use it later on on the exam when you're stressed about time, you're stressed about you know, a million other things. So reading consistently, reading every day, uh, that's, that's a great way to learn vocabulary rather than cramming it in. So you uh, heard it from the horse's mouth and uh, <laughs> vocabulary is extremely important when it comes to the reading test. Uh, what's also important is how you study it, how you record new vocabulary. So uh, don't put too much pressure, don't put too much emphasis on Vietnamese uh, literal translations of the word. Uh, instead, find uh, as many examples as you can so that you can uh, derive the usage and from the context uh, of the examples uh, as well as uh, do a lot of reading every day so that you will 
kind of reinforce the vocabulary that you have uh, learned. The next section is what I am particularly thrilled about. It is Voice of the Week. I think uh, this is season five now, so you guys should know this by now. Um, and we're going to hear from our Voice of the Week and uh, our IELTS expert here, uh, Mr. Alpa, mm -hmm. is uh, going to give uh, the candidate some feedback, and I think we're going to learn a lot from it. So uh, let's turn our attention to the screen and uh, see uh, what this week's candidate is. What's up, Ayo Face Off? My name is Leo, and welcome to Dong Hei Pan Bin. Today, we are going to try one of the best part of Pan Bin's specialty. Ever heard of Ban Lok? Those clear looking, cheery dumplings come in sweet and salty flavor. So stay right there in front screen and follow us to the most famous Ban Lok place in Dong Hei. So uh, what do you think about our uh, candidate this week from, from the introduction? Um, yeah, well, he's definitely very confident. I'm, I'm interested in, 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 in those dumplings. Uh, that sounds good. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, all right. So as you probably have known by now, um, we usually do this uh, interview, do this mock test uh, live in the studio. But uh, in light of the pandemic, that doesn't look to be uh, feasible anymore. So. Um, We'll make do with the power of the internet. So uh, our IELTS expert is going to have a live interview with our candidate um, from the comfort of his own home. And uh, let's wish our con uh, candidate the best of luck and uh, we'll see how he does. All right, so welcome to the uh, simulated IELTS test. Uh, let's get started with part one. Who do you think enjoys cooking more, older or younger people? Um, I think older people would uh, love cooking more than younger people. And the reason why is because older people, they, most of them, they are married. They are um, financial stability. And also cooking is one of their daily tasks because, you know, when they get home from work or outdoor activity, they have to cook for the whole family. So um, that is one of the reasons why they love cooking more than younger people. Let's go on to part two. Talk about someone you know who takes good photos. All right, to talk about someone I know who takes good photos, I will talk about one of my friends. So his name is Justin and he is American. So Justin usually takes photos of landscapes uh, like oceans, um, rice fields and mountains and he also do photos of caves because we do caving together sometimes. So when Justin got all his photos taken, he gonna bring them home and pull them into some um, photo editor software like uh, Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop to edit them. And uh, when all his photo is ready at the final version, Justin gonna uh, post some of them online to uh, social media to show people. He will also sell some of them to uh, some platform like uh, Shutter Stock, and sometimes Justin do um, he cooperates with companies to do the uh, certain project for for them and earn money from that. Uh, Justin also gonna print some of his photo out to sell the printing version because sometimes uh, you know people have want to have something nice to hang on in their houses, and the reason why I think Justin is a person who takes good photo is because um, for people who do. Uh, photos with the DSLR camera like us. It is really important to master three elements within the camera which are the uh, ISO, the shutter speed and the aperture and Justin do this really good because he has been taking photos for years and uh, while taking photo he also know how to pick up the best angle so the, the, the photo can appear nightly in the frame. Yeah, and that Which is our reason why I think the, uh, Justin is uh, the has person been photo for years that takes good photos that I know. Let's go uh, on to part three. Photos in general. Do you think people today take more photos than they used to? Yes, I think people nowadays take more photos than they used to because with the boom of smartphones and social media, uh, 
taking and posting photos online is like a trend now, I guess. And people are usually gonna keep their ugly and weird selfies to themselves. I do that too. And they're gonna send all the beautiful photos to other people. Thank you, that is the end of the speaking test. I, I'd, I'd say that takes some beating. Yeah. Obviously uh, a very advanced candidate, would you say? Yeah, pretty advanced. Uh, it was pretty well done. He definitely had some good fluency. Mm. Uh, you could tell he felt very natural and confident when he was speaking. There were some in inappropriacies, some incorrect vocab uh, that I noticed, and some small grammatical mistakes. Okay. But overall, he was a very strong candidate. I liked part two. When he when he had that he had some really strong vocabulary talking it was, uh, about the... his his home turf because he yeah. he's actually into photography exactly so he has some technical jargon yeah to so he he had out. some some vocabulary that I wasn't even familiar with yeah. uh, and he was able to talk about it pretty naturally uh, so that was really really good yeah some small grammatical mistakes uh, here and there don't doesn't but that being said it wasn't enough to really affect his his uh, his score I think I find that fascinating actually because um, I think something that we can kind of draw from that is that like even if you make grammatical mistakes in the exam room and you're conscious of it like as long as it's they're minor you can just like move on All right, so thank you Michael for uh, some really insightful uh, feedback I think uh, not only our candidate but the viewers at home can learn a lot from that yeah thank you very much yeah so uh, congratulations uh, Nguyen Thanh Cha aka uh, Leo Nguyen uh, remember guys you have a chance to vote for Cha at the end of this season uh, for our voice of the year and the winner will win a trip to uh, Sydney for a week to visit Macquarie University. Answers to the world's biggest questions are out there. When you connect with another and another, things just... That's you to the power of us. It's been a really educational episode, uh, personally for me and hopefully for you guys too, viewers at home. And in this episode, uh, we went with Tatham to a dog farm and uh, personally I wasn't always, you know, interested in dogs, but after seeing that video, you know, I think I might consider keeping a dog. Actually, I do have a dog, but I just don't pay attention to him. Maybe I'll learn more about dogs after this episode. And uh, we've got the chance to uh, see a really strong candidate uh, hailing from central Vietnam. And I think you guys learned a ton from the feedback of the examiner. And uh, until next time, stay tuned.